If you watch to the end of this video, I'm gonna give you an exclusive look at my content calendar for January so you can see exactly how I'm putting my Instagram strategy for 2024 into practice. But in the meantime, I really wanna walk you through what I see as the most important aspects of any successful Instagram strategy going into 2024. So welcome back my friends to my yearly tradition of exposing my Instagram strategy for you so that you can see the strategy and the reasoning that goes into how and what I post. And hopefully it'll share some insight that you can apply to your own Instagram content to help you grow a bit faster this year. 2023 was my biggest year for Instagram growth yet. I started with about 35,000 followers in January and by the end of the year I had over 100,000. However, I'm not just going to replicate the same strategy that helped me triple my follower growth in 2023. Instead, I'm going to modify it to make it even more effective for this year and also ensure that it preserves some level of work-life balance because that's really important too. Okay, let's talk about it. I'm sure it won't surprise you to learn that Reels was the most significant factor contributing to my growth on Instagram in 2023. My typical posting schedule was three, sometimes five Reels per week posted Monday through Friday. And I was honestly just generating ideas week by week, kind of making my reels on the fly. I did eventually land on a bit of a weekly content creation schedule where on like Tuesday I would script them, Wednesday I would film them, Thursday I would edit them and schedule them for the following week. But if I'm honest, it was a bit of a scramble. It was a little bit chaotic and I wasn't always the most consistent because I had to take breaks here and there because I couldn't keep up with it. Now, obviously posting that often was very beneficial to my growth, but I know it's not sustainable in the long term, especially with the other goals that I have for content in 2024, and especially with just doing it week by week and not planning ahead at all. So even though obviously it worked very well for me, I'm modifying to try to take advantage of the benefits that I saw in my strategy last year, but make it more sustainable for me to keep up for the rest of this year. So here's what I'm gonna do. I am planning on posting three reels per week, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, uploading them at 9 a.m. Eastern, though the timing of it doesn't really matter. That's just for the sake of my own planning and consistency. One of those reels is going to be an original reel and the other two are going to be trendy. I'm gonna plan my content ideas on a monthly basis and kind of start to script out what those original reels are gonna look like, but I'm not gonna actually create them until the week before I want to post them. This this will help lighten the load of my weekly workflow so I don't have to come up with ideas on the fly, but it will make it not so overwhelming to try to batch them a month in advance. And it'll also allow me to select audios that are trending at the moment when I want to post. So I'm kind of taking the Reels creative process and breaking it out into what I can plan in advance and what needs to be done in a more timely fashion, just to spread it out and make it less overwhelming. Okay, so let's talk about trendy versus original Reels, because I think this is a really important distinction that will help you craft a strategy that's most effective to work towards your goals. A lot of us, when we think about Instagram Reels, immediately what comes to mind is the trendy reels. So really short videos that are probably like five to seven seconds long, utilizing a trending audio, lots of visuals and text on screen. Not gonna lie, these reels perform really well. This is the kind of thing that will go viral the most easily. And they also have the benefit of being pretty easy to make. Once you collect a nice vertical B-roll library for yourself, which I recommend basically continuously filming your life here and there when you have a spare moment so that you can build up this library of content. And then you can just remix the B-roll that you've collected into different formats with different audios and different text on top. So not only are these easy to make, but they also tend to get you a lot of reach. Now you might be thinking, okay, Katie, if you're saying trendy reels are easier to make and they get me more views, why would I ever make original reels then? And it's true, some people approach Instagram reels that way and they can grow very quickly, but I see the limitation being community and like authentic connection. Because the thing is, I honestly do follow some accounts that basically just crank out a trendy reel every single day and they're kind of recycling the same six or seven clips that they have with different audios and different kind of text prompts. And yeah, they get millions of views, but I can only imagine that I'm not the only one who's noticed that they're just recycling the same clips again and again. And so the danger with only ever doing trendy reels is that you're gonna end up kind of boring your audience or maybe never really having a core community of people that sincerely care about you. Cause the thing about trendy content is the stuff that's gonna perform the best is the stuff that almost feels the most anonymous, that feels like anybody could insert themselves into your B-roll or into your scenario and feel like it 
relates directly to them, which means you're never gonna be able to fully infuse your own personality in that. If it becomes too niche or too specific to you, then it doesn't really work in that trendy format. And so that's why I think it's so important to incorporate original reels because it helps to nurture that relationship with your actual community and audience instead of just kind of pandering to the algorithm and trying to get as many views as possible. Cause yeah, views are important and reach is important, but what's more important is actual human beings that know who you are, are connected to what you're sharing and will click on your links and buy your offers and whatever. And just creating the most trendy sort of generic content for the algorithm isn't going to result in a strong community. So that's why original reels are important. And if you haven't heard me talk about them before, what I mean by original reels is almost like mini YouTube videos. These are the type of reels where you're maybe speaking directly to the camera or filming a bit of a vlog. Maybe it's a tutorial or maybe it's a story time. But the point is it doesn't rely on a trending audience audio to make sense. It's probably not gonna just be a collection of B-roll with text. You'll probably actually hear your voice in it and it'll likely be longer. A lot of the original reels that I make are the full 90 seconds. We'll get into this more in detail when I show you my content calendar because I think it'll be easier to explain with examples. But the main takeaway is when you're planning a reel strategy, it's really important that you target not only reach and growth, but also sustaining that connection with your community. Now, if you want to learn to edit your reels or design beautiful reels cover or write captivating captions, then you should definitely check out the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes for creative and curious people like you and me. All of these classes are perfect for content creators because the thing is, we content creators wear so many different hats from filming to editing to designing and writing. There's a lot of different skills that you want to hone to be a successful creator. Not only does Skillshare have a huge collection of individual classes, but they also have learning paths, which are curated sequential class collections that help you master a specific skill. I suggest checking out Grow Your First Online Business with Marketing Fundamentals. This series of classes is gonna help you nail down your branding and your marketing and help you find your clients through social media. The first 500 people to use my link will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure you go check that out. And thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Okay, I'm gonna be honest with you. I feel like carousels and feed posts in general, really anything that's not reels has been sadly neglected by my Instagram strategy in this last year. I really have been so focused on reels because that's where I see the most reach and growth, which I think it makes sense for your effort to be proportionate to where you're seeing results. However, I feel like there are a lot of benefits to carousels and feed content that a lot of people are forgetting about right now in this moment where we're so obsessed with reels. Specifically, I've just really realized more recently the importance of that community connection. Honestly, I've been feeling a little disconnected from the people that are following me on Instagram, which is why I started my broadcast channel and I'm trying to be more intentional about connecting over DMs and in the comments. And I think this is a really common thing with a lot of creators. Like the primary struggle of being a content creator is trying to get strangers on the internet to be invested in and care about your everyday life, which is a big feat. And I think one of the ways that you can take the audience that you have gathered through reels, which have gained you a lot of reach, a lot of new followers, and then convert that into an audience that's actually more like a community who not only cares about you and what you have to share, but also is connected with each other, I think one of the best ways to do that is through more personal carousel style content. So here's why I think carousels in particular are so good at connecting with your community. Okay, so for one, when I'm talking about carousels, I mostly mean like photo dumps. I really think photo dumps are kind of an underutilized style for a lot of creators. Like, yes, there's many influencers that are doing that all the time, but a lot of us who are so focused on reels and reaching new people, forget that we can share little moments of our personal lives with our followers. And I think you can do that through very casual photos of your life. Mostly this content is gonna show up in the feeds of your existing followers and that's okay. I think it's important that you don't judge carousels by your real standards because it's for a different purpose. It's gonna have a different result. And I think you wanna focus on trying to generate conversation in the comments, asking your followers to share highlights from their week as well. So my plan going into 2024 is to include like one little carousel photo dump per week. 
I'd really like to share a little behind the scenes moments, maybe like a photo of like my coffee on my desk or my filming setup. Cause I think it just gives a little bit more insight into what my life looks like. And it gives me a chance to connect more closely with my like most immediate community members in the comment section. Now, of course you can approach carousels in a different way. Like if you want to make graphic carousels that are meant to be shared, or if you want to share memes or like really artistic images that are going to show up on the explore page, you can definitely think about it that way. In my personal Instagram strategy though, I'm thinking about carousels as a way to connect with my community. So like I mentioned, community building is gonna be a big part of my strategy for this year. And that is taking form in this recent addition to my Instagram portfolio, and that is my broadcast channel. Instagram introduced broadcast channels back in February of 2023, but I just hopped on the bandwagon in November. If you're not familiar, it's essentially like a private Twitter feed, but it's kind of in the format of like a DM conversation. However, you're the only one that can put messages into that conversation. But there's some really great interactive features like polls, question boxes. And when you put something into this chat, your members will receive that notification in their DM inbox. You can send text, audio notes, videos. I'm really excited about this part of my Instagram strategy because it's already given me the opportunity to share stuff that I feel like isn't good enough for stories or the feed. Honestly, I can admit that I've gotten really caught up in trying to optimize my Instagram stories for the most reach possible. And I think the reality is when you're a full-time creator, anything that could potentially be monetized, like for example, doing brand deals on your stories, you're gonna get kind of fixated on what your numbers look like because you wanna make sure that you have good stats to show your brands. And like, aside from that, it's just, it's really easy to kind of fixate on numbers and want to see them get higher. But for some reason with the broadcast channel, knowing that it's a limited number of people that are even gonna join in the first place, I don't stress so much about how many of those people have actually opened up the message and seen what I sent. And so it gives me this freedom to share more behind the scenes stuff and gather more feedback from my most engaged audience members. So I'll send stuff like different thumbnail options for an upcoming YouTube video and get people to vote on which one they think is better, but also more personal stuff like little video updates about what's going on in my life. I think broadcast channels are an amazing way to foster that deeper connection with your most connected community members and not stress so much about the metrics. And it's just a really powerful way to directly connect with your followers because it kind of cuts through all of like the fog of the algorithm and goes straight to their DM inbox. So they're kind of more likely to see it once they actually join. Okay, so what's my actual strategy? Well, I'm gonna aim to share something in my broadcast channel maybe every weekday, maybe a little less often than that. I definitely don't wanna start posting stuff in there more than once a day, cause I'm afraid it'll get annoying. I think I wanna try doing some Q and A sessions and also just sending little life updates here and there. But overall, I'm not gonna overly strategize or overly optimize on this. I kinda just wanna go on vibes for the broadcast channel because it is about that authentic connection. So I would advise if you're starting a broadcast channel as well, don't stress out over having to do something like every day or every week or whatever. Just share stuff when you feel like it. The same way that you would in your like friend group chat or whatever. And I think that'll come across better to the audience anyway. Speaking of community, if you made it this far to the video, I just wanna stop and sincerely thank you for being here. I was in kind of a nostalgic and reflective mood making this video because I was looking back on my past Instagram strategy exposed in previous years and just thinking about how much my YouTube channel has changed since then, how far it's come and how I've been able to incorporate, I feel like more of my personality and more lifestyle pieces here and there, which is what I've always wanted to do. So thank you so much for sticking around for yet another year, yet another Instagram strategy exposed. And I just really, really appreciate your support on my YouTube channel. All right, moving on to Instagram stories. I have experimented a lot in the past year with my Instagram stories to try to figure out what works the best. For a while, I tried posting every single day, several times a day, like probably like nine to 10 different story slides by the end of the day. And then I tried posting like twice per week. If you wanna see the full multi-week experiment where I take you through my methodology and the results, you can check that out up here. But I'm just gonna tell you what I landed on and what I'm taking with me into 2024 as my 
Instagram strategy moving forward. I personally found that posting every single day on my stories led to quite low reach. I kind of think that I honestly just don't have enough interesting stuff or good visuals to share that frequently. I have found the most success with posting three times per week. So on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, this gets me the best views. And what it really comes down to is my story is able to fully expire, have its full 24 hour lifespan before I post the next one. Because the reality is if you're posting every single day, people are always going to see your oldest story first, right? If I tap on your story, I'm gonna see the first one you posted that still hasn't expired yet. And so if I post some stories on Monday that are kind of like meh, not that exciting, and then I start posting again right away on Tuesday, even if my Tuesday content is really good, people are gonna have to tap through the Monday stuff to see it. And so that's why if you post every single day throughout the week, you're gonna just see your views continue to drop because people have to tap through the previous stuff before they can see the newer stuff, which may be better and more engaging, but they're just not gonna see it if they have to tap through your older content first. So that's why I think every story gets its best opportunity for higher reach if you let your older stories expire first. Let's take a look at the analytics, shall we? Because I really have been tracking this quite closely and I've been tracking my stats month by month so I can kind of see how things have shifted as I've tried these different strategies. Thankfully, things have been steadily increasing since August when I did this big experiment and then I kind of shifted my approach. Back in August, the average reach for my stories was 2,651. This is also when I posted the most story frames at 65. In September, you can see I posted less often, only 48 story frames and my average which was 2,700, so we're getting a little bit higher. In October, I posted even less, only 33 story frames, and my average reach was 3,900, so pretty big increase there. And in November, even less story frames at 19, and my average reach was 4,600. I really think that things have increased for me because I've been taking more of a quality over quantity approach. Now, what I will say is, in my experiment, I did find posting more frequently got you less views per story, but it got you more like impressions overall because you have that many more story frames, right? So it's kind of like the same, like a thousand people or whatever were seeing all of my stories. So they were seeing me a lot, but with my posting less frequently approach, I'm getting a wider group of people seeing me less often. So I will admit it kind of depends on what your goal is. If you really wanna strengthen the bond with your most close community members, posting more often on your story might be a good approach. But if you want to expand your reach and kind of reach a wider swath of your existing audience, then posting less frequently but with higher quality stories might be the better approach for you. And I will also be honest that if I was able to maintain the average story views that I saw when I posted less often and still post more frequently, I probably would do that. Like in an ideal world, I'd be getting 5,000 story views every single day and posting multiple times per day. So I think that's something that I might experiment with or try to work towards this year is seeing if I can like get that reach up and then maintain it. But so far I found that difficult if I'm honest. While we're on the topic of stories, I wanted to talk about some of the trends that I've seen shifting in what seems to perform well on stories or what you see a lot of on stories these days. Now, of course, this is always going to be different audience by audience, but I've seen really strong indicators, at least in the people following me, of what kind of does well and what is not so great anymore. First big one, talking to camera, just long videos, several frames in a row of you speaking to the camera, even with captions, it's not engaging enough. It doesn't perform well. It's so much slower paced than say a reel where you've actually edited out your pauses and stuff. And for a lot of people who are watching without audio, they just have to like wait a long time for those captions to flip over to something new. Like it probably would be preferable to just read it all it'd be faster. Okay, this is an interesting one. Wide angle selfies used to be my absolute surefire way to start off the week right and get a lot of views. That isn't so much the case for me anymore, which is kind of a breath of fresh air because I always felt like my first photo needed to be a selfie in order to get like any reach. But I've actually found that kind of aesthetic environmental photos seem to be doing really well for me. Whether it's a photo of like my podcast set or just like my video in the morning light. These have been some of my better performing stories lately. And in general, I think this is a trend because a lot of the story content that I see 
It's kind of like tapping through a Pinterest board, which I kind of like. Another big thing I've noticed is that less text is better. I think that in the past, I've been really tempted to provide just a ton of context and write like paragraphs and paragraphs on top of photos. And not only does that not look very nice, but also most people don't have the patience to read it all. So I find that the best mix is a photo with just a little bit of text. That is like eye capturing because it's a beautiful photo, but it also kind of sustains that attention a little bit longer with some added text. Finally, by far the worst reach I saw this entire past year on my stories is when I shared a reel or a feed post. It's funny because you'd think, oh, this is a great opportunity for me to try to get more traffic to my reel. No, it's not gonna work because your story views are gonna be like less than half of what they normally are. And most of those people are not actually gonna tap and go watch that reel that you shared. So my plan for 2024, I'm going to continue with that Monday, Wednesday, Friday, every 48 hours posting on stories plan because that's worked really well for me. But my goal is to try to intentionally share more links, which I know might sound funny, but like I am like the worst at promoting myself. And I wanna try to share affiliate links, links to my offers, and just actually take advantage of all of this reach that I'm generating. Like I'm trying so hard to have higher story views and for what, right? Like I actually need to use that to further my business in some way. So that's my goal for the new year. All right, we have made it to that part of the video, friends. I'm gonna walk you through my actual content calendar so you can see how this all fits together. Okay, so this is my content calendar. I have it all set up in Notion. I'm a Notion girly through and through. This is my calendar for January. As you can see, I have a couple different formats of content here on Tuesdays. I have my YouTube videos all in various states of production. <laughs> And on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we have my Reels content. So like I was saying before, I plan out the concepts a month in advance, and then I'm gonna create the content a week at a time just to make it more attainable. I kind of mix it up though. Mondays tends to be my original content day and Wednesdays and Fridays are my trendy content day though. Not every week is like that. Now I know a really common question around batching and planning your content calendar is like, how do you plan trending content when you don't know what the trends are gonna be yet? And I'm gonna tell you how I do that. The thing about Instagram Reels trends is like, honestly, they're so formulaic at this point. It really doesn't matter what the audio is because the same kind of format is used again and again. It's very quick cuts on aesthetic B-roll with some kind of text over top of it with a different audio that gives a different vibe and then you just kind of match the text with the audio that has the right vibe. Okay, like for example, I've planned this one for Friday the 19th. I think I found the perfect tripod for creators. So this reel is literally just going to be vertical footage of me unboxing my new tripod for my phone. It's gonna be quick cuts and the text on top is going to say, I think I found the perfect tripod for creators. And then halfway through the video, I'm gonna have product details and caption show up on screen. I don't know what the audio is gonna be for this yet, but I'm gonna wait and see whatever happens to be the trending audio at the time. So that's what a lot of these reels look like. Another example, POV, you're creating your vision board for 2024, same kind of vibe. It's gonna just be cute clips of me making my vision board and then I'll pair that with an audio that's trending. Now for my original reels, I can plan more stuff in advance. Like for example, how to film high quality videos for Instagram. So I'm gonna go through and talk about the settings that I would recommend that you change on your phone. So I'm gonna actually be talking to the camera to explain this. So that is really what my content calendar looks like. I'm going to try to add my carousel posts in there. Like I was saying, I don't have those planned out necessarily because I'm gonna see what content Content I have at the time, but I'm gonna aim for posting those on Thursdays. And like I mentioned, my broadcast channel, I don't have that planned out specifically because I'm gonna try to do it based on vibes. If creating a content calendar like this for Instagram feels overwhelming to you, I did wanna let you know that my agency, Creator Lee Media, is currently accepting new clients for Instagram content creation. So you have two options. We can either build out your Instagram strategy for you and then you can run with it and create your own content, 
or we can create your Instagram strategy and create your content. You can check out all the details about that at the link in the description, or just go to creatorleadmedia.com where you can see our services and apply to become a client because we'd love to work with you. Oh, and one last note on the content calendar. If you're curious, yes, I do try to repurpose as many of these as possible as TikToks, and I'm thinking about doing them as shorts as well. And that my friends is my Instagram strategy for 2024 exposed. <laughs> I hope you found this helpful. I hope it can inform your Instagram content creation journey this year. And of course, if you want to see this content strategy in action, then you should definitely go follow me at Katie Steckley on Instagram. I feel like I have a very full Instagram journey ahead of me for this year because of course I've got my at Katie Steckley, my main page where I'm going to be sharing content with y'all, but I'm also reviving my creator club podcast, Instagram. And I'm also posting on my van life Instagram, Katie and Dan in a van. So stay tuned to see how that goes. You can let me know in the comments if you'd wanna see a video about like balancing multiple different brands and how I kind of keep it straight in my mind. And I'm still figuring it out, but I could take you along for the journey. Now, if you want more insight into why the Instagram story strategy that I'm implementing works and how I know it works, you should check out this video, my little mad scientist experiment where I painstakingly collected data to figure out what the best way to post on Instagram stories for maximum reach is. So check that video out next. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here for another year. I hope you're having adventures and following your dreams and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.